Hello everyone, welcome to the Game Some Perspective. I am Santi, and last week we were talking about Metro Exodus, which I worked as a game designer. And today, I, this is part two, we're talking about it again <laughs> with a little bit more. We're going through the level Volga, which was originally called Bridge. So if you want to know more about Metro and the development and the philosophy and some fun trivia and stories about it, don't forget to watch the first part if you haven't already. Find it in the description below. And without further ado, let's go. Continue. Last time we left with uh, Crest. We met Crest in the crane and we talk about how we direct the player. First things first, uh, zip lines in video games are a nightmare. Uh, I want to add zip lines to the list of really hard things to do in video games that do not seem to be that hard to do. This includes ladders and doors and now zip lines. I did not make the zip lines in Metro Exodus, but I was actually in charge of debugging a lot of them because zip lines tend to break really easily because even though you work on a straight line, each zip line has a different angle and sometimes they don't adapt correctly. Height and the position and the velocity, they don't adapt well. So each zip line sometimes needs to be debugged individually when you place them. So I was in charge of doing that and that was not the funnest part. <laughs> and last week we left with something very interesting. This level, Volga, originally was the, almost the reason this game got canceled, but also the reason why it did not. So why did that happen? Uh, when this game was in development, another game came out called Homefront The Revolution, which was the same publisher and the same genre. It was Deep Silver. The game didn't perform well at all, neither with critics nor sales. So that made Deep Silver really nervous about having another single player, first person shooter in the pipeline. They look at Metro Exodus really, really carefully. And the reality is that I didn't like what they saw. This happened when I've been in the studio for like two or three months. So I was just starting at 4A Games when, when Prof, the director, had to go to Germany to showcase the game and they did not like what they saw. So they were about to cancel the game. Sometimes when we talked about it, designer said that, why don't we become a double A game? And we are budgeted for $40, $40 instead of $60. Prof turned around and said, if I propose that, we would be canceled already. So Deep Silver was not in the idea of making a double-A game out of Metro Exodus. But the team was not that big. So we defined what made Metro special. And that is one of the main things that it, that it was, is that Frozen Stories, which we're going to talk a lot more about them in the future. Deep Silver's gave us, I think, three or four months to turn the ship around. So we all went hands on deck and fixed it. This is one of the parts that improved the most, actually, the coming part. So what made Metro special was the atmosphere. So this part was reworked to give within the open levels a section that felt classical Metro. Underground, monsters, you know, dread, darkness, radiation. You know, the idea was to create a small pocket of what Metro Last Light and 2033 felt. This has a lot of little details that teaches the player about how they will be guided in the future. Uh, the number one thing is that these green mushrooms that we set up as pickups, as collectibles, they always give chemical and they are there to guide the player. I think that people that play the game can clearly understand that these are meant for that. Going back to Deep Silver, we work like crazy in creating environments that were more like this and creating areas that told a story. After four months, we delivered again a build to Deep Silver and they liked it. They really liked it. They really said like, okay, you're moving forward. So this level, when they play tested it originally, almost canceled Metro. But by working in this level like crazy, understanding what made Metro special, going back to the drawing board, not being so obsessed with making open levels, you know, because we were like really to like, oh, the levels need to be open, more open levels. And we realized that that's not what Metro is. That's not what the market is for this game. So we went back to the drawing board and decided to make Metro more Metro. Going back and understanding that was essential. So in this area, you will find that there is green and blue mushrooms, but there is also lights. And the lights are there not just to light the way, but to guide the player. What does it mean? If you've been in an area already, the light would be turned on. And if you found uh, a light that has not been turned on, that means that you're in a new area and that you're moving forward. But this is a little bit of a labyrinth and a little bit more tense, you know, uh, you're starting to use so another light, right? And this is also a little bit, uh, it's not exactly the introduction of human animals, of these zombies, but this is kind of like the first area where you kind of encounter them in a more terror setting. So yeah, 
this is uh, this is this area right now and uh, you're rescuing Anna this has been from the beginning from the beginning we knew that they this is this moment is the inciting incident of the game spoiler alert Anna gets sick because of what happens here and is what pushes the whole game forward to a level called Yaman <laughs> Humanimals originally were like pretty difficult to make. So you will find out that they tend to f throw rocks at you. And that is because in several areas, in several parts of the world, especially in this level, Humanimals would become completely inoffensive if you were in a higher terrain. <laughs> and, and you needed to script very precisely the way Humanimals could go up. If you find a place in which Humanimals didn't have a scripted behavior, you would be completely safe forever and they will become completely useless. So we added a throw, so they will always find rocks no matter where they are. It's an issue that is always in video games, especially with melee enemies and shooters. When you have a more open level design and you have like more verticality in your games, you will find that melee enemies will not be able to reach you in several situations. It happens in every game I work on. Um, it happened in Far Cry. It might be happening in James Bond. Uh, I'm not saying it is, but it might be. Who knows? As always, like most of the cinematics are optional. And this is where we guide the player to go back to receive their mission. These hordes of enemies, surprisingly, are semi-systemic. So the horde will move systemically around the, the map, but will have spots that have pre-baked animations. And uh, these pre-baked animations, they will look for these pre-baked animations. And that what, that's what makes them kind of look like they're scratching for something or they're eating something. Sometimes you will see them get in cars and look up and stuff like that. But the reality is that Metro is very bespoke. <laughs> Metro is very handmade, very, very, very handmade. So all that are like actual positions that the designers set up in the world. Um, it's funny thing is that in 4A games, there's no distinction between game design and level design. We're all called game designers. But the reality is that we do game design and level design. And when you do level design for 4A games, you don't just do the block out and the encounters and the scripting and the pacing. When you are a level designer in Metro, you're actually doing almost everything. You're doing the environment, you're doing the lighting. I guess at the end of this series, I can showcase the last thing I ever did in Metro Exodus, which is just set dressing. It was just an environment art, what I did. And we talked in the previous video that certain cinematics, most cinematics, the player will have freedom to move. But we take some control from the player where it makes sense. The reason why Artyom actually sits down in the cinematics was actually because I proposed it to the director because there is a lot of important information and there is a map in front of the player. So because we want this to be the most diegetic as possible, we want the map to exist in the real world, to keep the game believable. And as such, we needed the player to focus here, to focus on the cinematic. And from stopping the player from moving around, we asked the player to sit down in order to start the cinematic, which is believable, right? It's something that someone might ask of you and is not necessarily like outrageous. So while I was doing the storyboards of this cinematic, I came with the idea of sitting Artyom down so that in a believable way, they, the player cannot move. And I actually scripted this as well. And then afterwards, we can have the characters and everything but we do not restrict the camera movement. And that's important. There is still some level of control. The player still has some agents. So we can explain. And the reason is the whole level hinges on the player understanding what's happening next. They're going to go to a certain area to pick up a train, like a smaller train, and then get a wagon so that everybody can come in and you can start growing the train and getting the adventure. But it's pretty complex. It's actually something relatively new. We are giving the player complete freedom freedom to go wherever they want at this point. And this is where like the frozen stories came into place during the playtest with Deep Silver. At this point, the level became really boring because there was like objective one, objective two, and those areas, which we're going to see in a future video next week, are extremely difficult. They were extremely difficult, hard challenges. 
that they were not super fun. So this is another reason why Artyom is sitting down is because it's very important that Artyom sees this cinematic and so the player sees this cinematic so they can receive the key that they need to unlock the, air, the next area to go in case the players were going there first. So we're gonna move a little bit ahead because as always, when a cinematic ends, we want to keep the, give the players even more. You know, like there's the, the, the characters are aware Artyom is there and they can keep talking but this point is optional. Uh, something cool is that this the mechanic to clean your weapons actually came quite late in the development and it was the same guy that made the zip lines made this mechanic and he was very passionate about having the weapons to degrade you know the, he was very passionate about degradable weapons and all the mechanics that if you don't clean them they will start to get stuck they will stop firing they will misfire they will affect the player I think that was amazing that was like an amazing mechanic added if you, and this is if you jump in the water you know if you get hit uh, if you go through like very dusty areas very the, your weapon basically will change texture and will become really like degraded and it was just one guy the same guy that made the zip lines he is now i can say he is a technical designer at massive in sweden he worked on the avatar game if i remember uh, Jay, if you watch this video, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> One of the reasons the game has like this kind of workbenches and this kind of simple crafting is because the lead designer just played The Last of Us just before developing Metro Exodus and he liked the idea, so there, there you go. <laughs> Another thing that we really wanted to do is that we wanted to give little side quests, but kind of let the player figure them out. So there is no journal. The map will have the objectives marked, but there is no guidance. There is no journal that is like, oh yeah, this is, but the map will have a marker and we just let the player explore and find these uh, side quests. And if the player misses them out, we're okay with that. And that's something that you have to learn, especially with working in a game like Metro. Designers and artists and programmers, we need to learn that players, optional content is that optional and that if player does not experience it, it's not to the decrement of the of the game. It should not be. Sometimes a lot of developers want are so excited about their job and their work that they want players to experience what they did. But I think Metro understands very well that the side quests are that side quest. So that's it for today. I'm gonna do another video for you guys next week, finishing Volga. Hopefully, this might become a four-parter instead of a three-parter. <laughs> Let's see. It might be the month of Metro, the month of July. Let's see how it goes next video. Please let me know what you guys think. If you like it, if you didn't, if you play Metro Exodus, let me know what you like the most. If you didn't play it, did I convince you? I actually think you can jump into this game without playing the previous ones, but the previous ones are excellent as well and are very accessible. So give them a try if you want to. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Please let me know what you guys think and have a good one.